All right, welcome back, fans, to the Pick 6 Podcast. I'm your host, Vince McKee. And while we usually have athletes on the show, football players, most times, more often than not, some girls basketball players, today, this is what they call a guilty pleasure. And what I mean by that is having fun, right? So for me, this is more so um, a, a guest I've wanted to have on for a long time. Um, her name is Kathy Pickett. I knew her as, as Kathy uh, Schrader a long time ago. Almost seems like lifetimes ago now, but I've known this uh, young woman since I've been 16. Uh, she wrote a phenomenal book about spirit and belief, uh, about the Ultimate Warrior as well. And you guys know we're huge uh, wrestling fans here. So without any <coughs> excuse me, without any further ado, I want to bring her in now, Kathy Pickett. Kathy, say hi to the audience. Hi, everybody. It's so great to be here. I'm very excited, Vince. Thanks for having me on today. Oh, no doubt about it. You know, I've, t- I've talked a little bit. I-, I threw an article out there about spirit and belief, made sure to leave a review. But I thought if our fans were really going to learn about this book, they needed to learn from the author herself. So first things first, we call this the Pick 6 Podcast. We're going to throw six questions at you. and. Okay. This will really be able to give our guests, uh, really our listening audience, a chance to get to know you and the book a little bit better. So I want to start off with, first of all, and ask you, how did you become a fan of The Ultimate Warrior? And, you know, how old were you? And kind of walk us through that process. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that would take a while. So I got to sum it up quick. Um, you know, we had been watching wrestling already for several years in my house. And um, I believe I was 15 so I was a sophomore in high school which is age my daughter is now it's crazy um when he first like appeared on um my tv and so I had already been watching maybe about three years I want to say my brother oh I when I first saw him I mean I you know just like everybody else and like the commentators and what they say like oh he's very different and all that stuff and um, and I noticed that too, because I knew all the characters and I knew their gimmicks and uh, what they were doing and all of that. And at that time, and things were very, very different back then in the mid 80s with what they were doing. Um, so I think it just kind of went from there. Um, you know, as he was adding more things to the character, it was just very exciting. I think it was just very, very exciting what he was doing things that were different and um I really think at that time in my life I just really needed something like that and I looked forward to the shows and um he was just very exciting and you know he had all the colors and other wrestlers would have that and um you know Randy and all that but you know he just it was just very um intriguing to me and like when he talked about the gods and all that and I could connect to that because I actually really listened to him it wasn't just watching um I listened to him and even though it sounded crazy some people I actually got it like I got the stuff he was saying and I I loved mythology when I was in school and so I think there was just a lot I could identify and it was just really um just so out there for me but in a way I could relate to and so you know and I was a fan of his the whole time and you know I don't watch today but I know enough about what they're doing um but yeah I I think it just sort of went from there and you know when he you know had the comings and goings and then he was off for a while and we didn't have cable so when they came back and it was on cable I couldn't watch anymore um so pretty much it was through 87 to 92 so and I heard about his returns and all that but I never saw them until much later so um yeah that was kind of beginnings for me and um how it all began in a way. <laughs> so, right. summarizing, yeah. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, I did not have cable either. So, those Saturday morning yes. shows and Sunday morning shows <laughs> were so big. Um, now, right. now, fans of our show know uh, I've actually written 10 books. It's crazy to think. Um, but I remember my first book, Hero, it took me a while to write. And I remember when I was writing it, I thought to myself, like, I can't believe how much work this is because it was a ton, and but it was worth it. Now, sure. for and, and I've always told people, too, you have to be really inspired to write a book because it's a gigantic time commitment you're making with very little return. There's no guarantee anybody's going to buy. You, know, you, you have no guarantee right. with it, right? You hope 
okay. you you know you know you have a good idea. So for this though, spirit and belief. I read it in two days. I couldn't put the thing down. I, I, I'm telling you guys, buy the book. I love it. Uh, what what did... Oh, you know, it's the best of both worlds. Number one, I'm a wrestling uh, fan. Number two, I've known you for 20 plus years. And I know, <laughs> like, I can hear your voice. So as I'm reading this book, yeah. I feel like you're reading it to me, which is really the best feeling ever. Uh, but yeah. what inspired you to write this book? What made you decide, you know what, I'm going to write a book? Right. Um... Yeah, and that's another, would be another lengthy uh, question. But I think um, for me, I, you know, I want to tell people because I, I just have to be honest. It's really not, if you're looking for a full-on, like, wrestling book, that's not what this is. So um, I just, you know, I have to say that, yes, it is about his, his career and my start with all that. But really, it's more the spirituality part of it um and i started i actually had signs many years ago but um i just sort of ignored them and i just thought okay well that's that and whatever and i've had i had dreams a visit dreams actually from people and i just thought that was a part of me and i i didn't look at it that way and so that was kind of put on hold and i had some things where my kids are really little but i I just sort of, you know, put it back in my head, you know, and and maybe that was just a little, obviously was, a little preview of what was to come. And so I started having all these things and decided to write them down and just to write them down for me more than anything, just to be cathartic. And my goal was like when I finally decided to do the blog, which came a year before the book, and now I have two blogs, um, you know, I've heard, I heard people say, well, you probably have enough like to write a book. And I never, ever, ever thought that at all. And I looked at like this company that I was getting, um, you know, spiritual teachers off of, and they had a smaller company and they said, Hey, if you want to send away for a free publishing guide. And I thought, what the heck, you know? All right, well, let's just see where this goes. And I was kind of, kind of spontaneous a little bit and they said okay so we'll contact you in a few days and you know it just kind of went from there and I I didn't really think it was a reality for me I really didn't but I think another reason is because that that was more the process but um I was starting to read books by people and a lot of them were psychic mediums which I'm not um but people have other spiritual gifts and they have things happen and they would have these huge life-altering moments and stuff and I didn't I didn't have any of that. And I thought, okay, but you still have things anyways. And, you know, but some things they were having, I could identify with, but I think, you know, a lot of it's in my introduction, but, you know, to kind of summarize it, it's just, you know, I wanted to put a book out there that shows a different side of how things get started and how things develop. And I know, you know, he was a celebrity and I know a lot of people will, will look at that angle. Um, Because it's not like I'm writing about my grandma or somebody like that. And so when you take that on, that's that's a big thing. I didn't know how to combine both of those. Um, But I think I just wanted to prove to people, like, there's so many um, myths out there that I really just wanted to bust through. And just to prove to people that it doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to have it line up like this. You don't have to have this or that set in place. And I found out more as I got along. Um... But I think once I really thought that, you know, this message needs to come out in a different way than all these other books I was reading. And, but I knew, I knew it would be risk. I thought, okay, who's famous? Oh my gosh. And those are like some of my baby stories. Like I've had so many other things that I've blogged, you know, in the past five and a half years. But I think that's what inspired me. I, I just kept thinking to myself, there's other ways of looking at this. And I think people have misconceptions about spirituality, however you want to define it. And I thought, well, I have humor with it and I have personal things. It's not just a bunch of, you know, facts or whatever. And I just wanted to put it out there that way and, you know, just share in a way that people maybe could connect and relate without it sounding like it was too, you know, complicated for them so once I started going you know I just started kind of formatted the blogs basically to fit you know book type and then I put a few other things in there as well but um but yeah I I really believe like that he 
you know, was definitely inspiring me. And he never got his books out there that he wanted either. So <laughs> um, this made it extra special in that way, too, just to keep going. And so, like you said, anybody who gets it, you know, and, and wants to be inspired by it, uh, you know, I have to let that go and just say, well, it is what it is. And, you know, if it interests people, then it does. And if you can connect, great. <laughs> so that's kind of, you know, how it was for me. So, Guys, the book is called Spirit and Belief. The author on the line with us today, Kathy Pickett. Kathy, what can fans expect to learn from reading the book? Um, you know, I think there's so many things. Um, and I, I know in the beginning I had wrote, wrote down, which I think everybody should do if you're putting anything out there like that, you know, goals. And um, I never wanted to sway from them. And because I can very easily, as I think people can when you go off on tangents and just you know, keep talking and keep writing. Um, I really wanted to show people that, you know, like to say, even spiritual gifts, you know, they're all a part of us. They really are. It's just a matter if you recognize them as such and you're becoming aware of them and you want to tap into them but i think you know if let's say the universe or spirit world whatever you want to call all of that um connects with you um it's going to be pretty persistent it really is and you have to be the one to decide on your own how that works for you and and i just i wanted people to know that Things can happen to anyone. There's no, you know, um, kind of areas that are just reserved for certain people. And, you know, even him being a celebrity, uh, you know, there's definitely a connection that we have. But um, I didn't want people to go in thinking that these things, you know, weren't real, that couldn't happen. Um, but just to be aware that, you know, we all have these gifts, and just because someone was a celebrity, I, it's very hard sometimes to dismiss that. Um, but just to kind of tap into your own feelings, and if it is something that you're getting, you know, go with it and follow that intuition, like I tell people, um, because I I never doubted the things I got, but I doubted myself. I doubted myself as being the recipient of it, and so I think taught me to a lot of like self-worth and just you know believing in a higher power in a different way that maybe we were taught and I know that this opened up my whole world of, of looking at things in a different way and so just to be open um to experiences happening to you and and you know, have humor with it because he's very funny and they want us to laugh and they want us to enjoy life and um, but just to be aware, aware, be aware of possibilities, you know, and just uncovering it that way. And, and I guess for him to seeing him in a different way that he wasn't this pigeonhole, you know, kind of person that he, you know, really did have other sides of him. And so, um, and I've explored that in tons of other ways besides the book, but yeah. So just, you know, learning about yourself in different ways and opening up to the thought of that we're all people and we're all the same. So I hope that's a good takeaway for everybody, you know, there. You have a, a, a point in this book, you know, um, chapter 33, where you say my entire life has been wanting to do things by myself in a way that works <laughs> for me. I try so hard and never give up because defeat is not an option. Oftentimes, I would ask myself why the complicated or complex situations always seem to find me. Guys, if there's one passage from this book that speaks volumes to me and my own personal life, that's the one. Um, and we we've always heard the cliche in life, you know, if it's if it's worth it, it's worth fighting for, or doing it your way, right. and and having that freedom. They've often said if you work for yourself, there's no greater boss, right? So. Exactly. Same thing, you know, same thing mentally, right? So to me, that speaks volumes to me. Um, if you were to pick one, you know, I'm not asking you to take a page number or anything crazy, but if you if you were to pick one story from this book um, that you feel will impact people the most or, or maybe was your favorite one to tell, which would it be? And you, you can only pick one, what would it be? Yeah, and that's a, 
that's a tough one, and I, I, I never wanted to pick like um, one that involved like my specific family members, and I, I didn't want to do the dreams or anything either. And this one that I'm gonna pick is one I actually did a YouTube video on, but I just think it just stands out for me, and it's about the batteries, which I'm sure you remember it. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's just, I mean, I have other favorites. Um, but the reason why I picked this one is, uh, you know, because when you get signs from people, and if people ever have, and I hope there's a ton of people out there who have, there's lots of commonalities when you maybe start researching this or when you physically have things happen to you. And, you know, and everybody says things like, I have cardinal stories in my book. And so I know people for years who have said, oh, cardinals, those are visits from loved ones, you know, all of that. And, but they really have to be doing bizarre things in a different way. It could, could just really be a bird flying around, you know, really. Um, but that's a common one. And or feathers, because I'm all about the feathers. I just blogged a story yesterday that involved them. Um, but other things too, like nature stuff. And that's huge, huge. So when I get something like, batteries <laughs> you know um but unmistakable and um i just think it was just so compelling to me so um just to kind of summarize the story i had bought these um or this uh flameless like candle lantern and i wanted something new and whatever and um i never thought about it like i it had batteries in it and I finally had turned it on months later because I was waiting till it got, you know, darker out and stuff. And then the batteries were out. And so I thought, oh, okay, time to replace those, I guess. So I popped it open and the batteries fell out. And both, and I actually still have the photo. So for people who think this is nuts or whatever, you can think that you're entitled to think that. But um, so the batteries rolled out on my counter and they both say warriors on them. <laughs> and my reaction is never what people probably think it is. I'm not a bawling, you know, mess. I don't cry like people. I do, but not in that way. And I just looked at them and I went, no. <laughs> it's just really, really bizarre. And um, I remember I wanted so badly. I had contacted, I found Warriors' former manager, um, Steve Wilton. So, yep, I'm outing him on here. Um, but I <laughs> told him about, I know, well, we've talked, so it's, it's okay. Um, I posted this on Twitter with the photo and I, I just thought, well, I'll see what he says. And he said that, you know, they will run forever. And it was just, it was really nice that he even responded at the time. And, um, so I just, I, I wanted to save the labels really bad, but they were already like starting to corrode, but just like everybody else. And I've told this story before. And I remember once I was at a, um, it wasn't just a book signing. I was explaining the book in this spiritual store and everybody's like whipping out their phones, <laughs> trying to look up these batteries. And I'm just sitting there like, yeah, you're not going to find anything. And no <laughs> one ever could. And I, I would look it up and then I would wait a while and think, okay, maybe that was just a fluke. You know how we then start doubting. And I thought, no, let's, okay, I'm going to look it up again. Maybe, you know, there's something. No, there's never anything, not describing them at all. And I, so you do, you start to think like, well, wait a minute, were those in there when I bought it? Wait a minute, did those, wait, because <laughs> it's such a, it's such a dramatic thing. And yeah. And so I say in the, um, the book i cannot pass even to this day which makes me smile but i cannot pass a battery display in a store without <laughs> just laughing because you'll see all the brand names right and you'll see even off brand names and stuff but yeah these two said warriors on them and they were purple and yellow and um i know he did that combination a couple times but it, you know, maybe that's irrelevant i don't know but anyway so it's just one of those times where you it's unexplained in a way, and yet it's not a traditional sign that a lot of people talk about, and no, I've never read anything. And I, I think it summarizes him so well in a way where very different, very different, and not something you'd ever expect. You know, yes, I get the traditional signs too, but batteries, <laughs> like it was such, it was such an interesting thing, and I, I just think that it's just, you know, really 
cool example because it was something tangible also that you could see and touch and um, not just telepathically feeling, which is what a lot of my stuff is. Um, but yeah, just, just a very different one and unmistakable. I mean, the word warriors, come on, you know, <laughs> so I look at it like, how could people doubt that? And, it, you know, and just everything that I was doing at the time, um, and a lot of that stuff happened, you know, simultaneously. It was one thing after another with me. If it wasn't that, it was songs on the radio, which, oh, I still get those. And uh, just different things, like, you just can't even imagine. And so that's just a really cool story, just from the standpoint of it being different and you know, very real, real, none of this is things I'm fabricating for any reason at all. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's gotta be my, one of my favorites. So it's called the mysterious batteries and it's, I'm just looking at chapter nine. (laughs) (laughs) So it's a short little story and they're they're just short little stories. Um, but yeah, that's a biggie. (laughs) You know, tremendous stuff here guys too, because you know, believe it or not, but I both these things were unintentional. Number one, I, I have a, a ton of water bottles in my house. Obviously, covering a lot of games, having kids, we go through a million water bottles. I sure. grabbed one. I grabbed one this morning to use, and I kid you not, I swear to God, wasn't paying attention to what I grabbed, but sure enough, it was my Ultimate Warrior water bottle. So that I mean, that's I think that's hilarious. Number number two. Um, fans of all my books, you know, I tried to slide in at least one Rocky reference. Uh, the movie Rocky is my all-time favorite. Um, yes. That entire lineage has inspired me to everything I've become today. And sure enough, everyone knows it's Rocky Balboa. Well, if you flip to the back of the book here with um, with Spirit and Belief, flip to the back, and sure enough, Balboa Press. So <laughs> tell me that's not a coincidence, right? So right. I, Well, you know, what's even funnier is, and I... I didn't know some of this at the time, but I know Warriors with Dana, for people who don't know, she has mentioned this, that he was always inspired by um, the Rocky movies. Also, well, Arnold Schwarzenegger, for the obvious reasons, but um, bodybuilding and such. But she mentioned Rocky, and like um, I've had the songs play from the Rocky soundtrack sometimes. Um, of course, there were ones by the group Survivor that mm-hmm. were out there that were super popular like i just heard eye of the tiger yesterday and um but so many other ones and um i can't even think oh burning heart that's the other one um but then i heard another one from the movie recently that i don't have it memorized i mean people may think there's things i have memorized i really don't and so I heard that song most recently and she said too dana i believe that he got warrior when he started doing his um snarling he got that from rocky and i had not known that either so i forget when she mentioned that but i never forgot it and so yeah very interesting like just to get a couple of new things you know but yeah so you grab in the water bottle see you had to contact me today how about that yeah i absolutely <laughs> love it. i was dropping off the girls at school and i looked over and i'm like go figure but yeah, yes. awesome sauce. Nice. So two two questions left for you here on the Pick 6 okay. podcast. And Normally, like I said, we reserve these podcasts for quarterbacks, so this is just uh, no, definitely a left turn honored. today. Having some fun. Um, yes. How has your life changed since you've learned to trust your intuition? Yeah, uh, in a very big way. And I have to say, um, just as you know, a person and people like we all are, I I still have doubts just in in general the warrior stuff no um but in other ways um because i and i think i said this in the book i never grew up even hearing that word i really didn't and um and we've heard of things like conscience and and you know your spirit and that's in all of us and all of that if you believe in that those types of things because it's all about having certain mindsets and it's energy which we all are anyway and belief systems um that you tap into to remember and i i would think to myself you know um it's not maybe something new to our soul that we're you know learning um our soul already knows it's you remembering so when you're you know here on this earth in a body like it, it, you know you don't remember any of that um but yeah that was a word that i i really 
um, wasn't too keen on. And you know certain things, okay, okay, okay. Um, and trusting your gut. And Warrior talked about that all the time, trusting your instincts. And, oh, you got to go with your first impulse, you know, when we change our minds and we change our minds. And I always still find myself doing that. Um, but I'm learning more to just kind of go with the flow because that was something I was told. I work with an energy healer and that was always an expression. And then I started seeing it. I started seeing it everywhere. You know, don't overthink things. And yes, warrior was a thinker, but, um, you know, we need to get, I always say to people, you know, it's your head, your heart and your gut, but people forget the gut and, you know, just the feelings that you get from that. And I know when I was younger, even well into my adulthood, I used to have like, um, well, people probably get this, the pit in your stomach that, you know, when you're maybe going to do something or you're nervous or you're afraid, not the good feelings, not like the fun butterflies, but the nervousness. And I know now that that was an indicator of don't do it, whatever it is right now. Maybe you'll do it in the future, but not now. And we do. We just, you know, take those chances. But I know now that was a sign for me. And that's probably very common for a lot of people. But we override that because we want to do what we want to do. And sometimes, like, the universe has other plans. And so... I'm learning as I go along, like we all are. There's still moments that are tests for sure. Um, certain things, no. Like I said, they're easy for me. I already know it because I think when you get to that point, you already know. And you don't have to second guess yourself. You don't have to ask questions. You just already know. And I think that that's probably a struggle for all of us. Um but especially when I wasn't aware of that when I was a kid, like I didn't, I didn't have the confidence in myself. I didn't, I didn't trust a lot of things. And so it takes a long time to get through that level. And it's, it's healing for sure. But, you know, the universe doesn't give us what we can't handle. And so I think it's, you know, it's a lifelong thing, but I, I'm growing every day and just looking at intuition in a different way than I ever did before. So, um, like I said, there's some things I always trust no matter what, but other things, yeah, you have to really feel your way through it, not think your way through it. And so that has helped me a lot in that way to focus on that aspect of it, you know? So, well, we live in a different world now than we did 20 plus years ago too. And that's the thing, like I, I would say, because, I think, you know, I think one of the reasons me and you connected back then and we still do today is our upbringings, quite frankly. And, you know, we, I, I grew up in a black and white world, just like I think you grew up in a black and white world. And I don't mean that, you know, racial in any way. What I mean by that is, what I mean by that is, is you trusted everything you were told from your parents, from your priest, from whomever exactly. else, right? So yes, you get, sure. you get older and you start going through some experiences and, you know, I know for me, at least, I could tell you guys this, you know, uh, I'll, I'll reveal this here on the show. And a lot of people already know, you know, I spent 16 years as a bill collector and doing bill collections <laughs> for yeah. 16 years right. makes you a very <laughs> skeptical yeah. person. But, but the thing, and, and the thing about it is, is it, 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 it really taught me quite frankly to trust my intuition. Like if I knew somebody yeah. wasn't going to pay, I knew pretty quickly and the thing about it is, is I was able to transform that into my real life every single day. And, you know, okay, do we trust people? Do we trust ourselves, quite frankly? Yes. And and going through those thoughts. And to me, you know, like I said, knowing Kathy like I do, knowing her family, um, so many positive experiences, such a huge part of, I'm not really my childhood, but my teenage years. And, right. you know, to, to me, I knew it. So when Kathy came back into my life, um, probably six months to a year ago now, at least about a year ago, yeah. I had, I had that feeling immediately. I'm like, man, I'm like, this is a God blessing. I'm like, I love wow. those people. And this, this was great to, to be able to bring you back into my life as well as Chris. Yes. So trusting yes. your intuition to me is, right. is a really, really big deal. So my final question for you here today, as we wrap things up on the pick six podcast with author, yes. Kathy Pickett, author of spirit and belief. All right, the burning question. All right, you talk about you know burning hearts there, the survivor song yeah. and everything else. Has this, the burning question for me because I will buy it day flipping one. I'll be one of those goofballs you see standing outside the bookstore waiting to buy it. Nice. <laughs> Has a second edition or a sequel? Um, is it in your brain? What are you thinking? Are we going to get one or what's up? Because uh, Christmas is nine months away. We got nine months to make this happen for a Christmas game. Oh my game. gosh, 
gosh. Yeah. I mean, and I've had other people ask me, and I don't, you know, like you said, it's, I mean, I look at what you've done, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, 10 books. Wow. Because, you know, and I know other people, like a cousin of mine who is, you know, best selling author, and it was never my intention ever. Um, and I could definitely with the content and everything that I have. Um, yeah, I, I I hate to say never say never because that expression is very personal for me in other ways. Um, but it's not off the table. It's not. It's just timing, you know, and it's not that I can't, you know, because I can multitask like the best of them. Um, but I just look at the way my kids are right now and, uh, and maybe when we are little bit more empty nesters um I yeah it's not again that I can't I would definitely um do the process a different way um and uh you know now that I've done it you know with a company and all that um so there's definitely yeah, a lot of questions in that um yeah and I still have books I mean you know I still have some I could you know sell that way if if you know people are interested in that instead of um, you going online. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I really, I can't fully say, um, I don't have the burning desire right now to go through the process. Um, but like I said, it's not off the table. Um, but you know, it's, it's definitely an option. So I guess we'll see time will tell. Um, but yeah, like you said too, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to sit there and find time and, you know, pump, pump it all out. And um, it didn't take me, like the process for me didn't take quite as long as other people. It was a short book and, you know, all that. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. But, um, you know, but, the, you know, it's out there and people can find me and I'm, I'm you know, doing other things and, um you know, I have other social media platforms and all that. And, um, but yeah, I, I never looked at it in that way at the time. Of course, is there ever being another one? But, you know, when I started the blog, my goal was to just write it for a year. And here I am five and a half years in, you know, so I <laughs> no idea. I really, I mean, I really didn't think I'd have more material. I thought, okay, that's over. We're moving on. Um, so yeah, uh, we, we shall see. We shall see. So we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Writing is an addiction, man. I'll tell you what. Uh, at, le- at least it is for me. You know, I, it's just, it's something um, I did as a little kid, kept the journal and everything. I remember I, I wrote your sister Peggy probably about 500 little notes. I just, I, I love to write, right? So. Um, right, I know. See, and people don't, they're not, you know, and into that. And that's why I do other things like you in a way because I think, well, not everybody's readers. And, you know, so that's why I have YouTube and, you know, do it differently so people can watch and listen. And, you know, there's so many other formats now that didn't exist, you know, years ago. And I never even thought, I mean, I was good in writing in school, um, but I never, I never would have thought. And, you know, that his passing, like I had gifts, but his passing just brought them all out. And I know more reasons why now. Um, but, you know, and I... I have stories I think I blogged about high school and writing and the journals and stuff. And I just did it. Like, I never thought, hey, I'm good at this. It was just part of its assignments you do in school. and But I was good at it. And I just never, you know, thought that it would materialize into anything. But I look back on stuff and just laugh now and think, oh, well, that makes sense. That I, you know, did that back then or that back then or, you know, and so... Yeah, so those things really come back, you know, into your future in some way, shape, or form. But, you know, um, and does it be a published author? Like, I, you know, and maybe, I don't even know if that was a goal for you, but um, no, that was never, never something, you know, in my life at all. So, you know, yeah, but writing is, yeah, it's it's very cathartic for me I have several journals and I I write down lots of things and I just I sound so much like warrior with some of the stuff I'm going oh my gosh because these are just things I did it wasn't like oh I'm copying him or whatever no no it's just me doing it that way I'm old-fashioned I I still actually physically write things it's not on a laptop all the time I don't I don't always do it that way um 
you know, even the warrior writings, I actually write those. I write them out and I've saved every one of them and I'm running out of space, but I've saved them. And I, those are just my way of doing that one. But, um, you know, so yeah, it is, it is definitely, um, a great experience. So, um, for anybody out there, you know, keep doing your thing. Keep, if you want to write, go ahead and find ways to do it the best way that works for you. So, Kathy Schrader Pickett, so <laughs> awesome to catch up with you today. You'll always, hey, you'll always, you'll always be uh, Peggy's sister to me, but definitely oh. so much fun today. Uh, I, we appreciate it. So we are going to invite you back anytime you want. Um, and like you said, you know, it's you're still a couple years off from being quote unquote an empty nester. But if you ever Not get, exactly. <laughs> if you. Oh, right? <laughs> hey, you know, I, I get it. It's funny because it's like I cannot remember the last time I went to bed um before midnight you know because for me Aww. it's it's i stay up till probably 2 3 a.m writing and working um Aww. it's just it's the life I've, i'm living right now but it's funny because yes. a, a lot of times uh well pretty much every night i will put my daughter to bed my five-year-old and she likes to snuggle and Aww. so i snuggle her up you know and lately i've been passing out and then wa- <laughs> and then waking up i'm like oh my god it's like 11 o'clock i gotta get out of bed and go back to work and stuff so it's it's yeah. it's kind of funny like that but it's awesome having the kids that we do and it's soaking up every sure. moment. But when you are ready to start writing again, I will personally do whatever whatever I can to help you because I you know, I'll, I'll tell this one quick story here to wrap up the podcast. Um ever since my first book got published back in 2012, so it's 10 years now coming up in the fall will be 10 years. People have always come to me and say, "How do I write a book?" And I've I've taken yeah. the time to help them. But here's the problem. In 10 years, I've probably helped at least 15 people. Zero and I mean zero, have actually followed through. None of them. So, oh, and it's aggravating because it's a long process to sit down and show someone how to do it. It takes like an hour. Like you talk about the query letter and and the outlines and everything you got. There's a ton that you have to do. And just to explain to somebody everything you have to do takes about an hour. So, you know, for every single person not to do it is really, really frustrating. So for you, though, you've already shown me that, number one, you know how to follow through on something. And and to me, that's my biggest thing, right? I mean, I am so driven that if I say I'm going to do something, I'll move heaven and earth to make sure it's done. So that's the yeah. thing. Always willing to help. Kathy, we want to thank you again, and we're going to wish you the best of luck. And we're going to keep your phone number in our phone. Sound good? Excellent. Oh, yeah, it sounds wonderful. And, yeah, you guys can find me. I'm out there. Warrior Rating, SpiritBelief.com. I'm on Twitter, YouTube. And so, yes, I would I would love to come back. I could talk all day. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so can I. All right. Well, we're going to wish you the best of luck, and I will talk to you soon, Thank young you. lady. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Bye now. Bye-bye. So that was Kathy Pickett of Spirit and Belief, guys. Check out the book. Um, here in the article, too. There's like, like Kathy said, there's so many ways to get stuff out there nowadays. So we're going to post this on Podbean, th- more than likely put it up on YouTube. And obviously in this article, we're going to put a few links as to how you could buy the book and how you could follow Kathy. We want to thank her again. Thanks to Ultimate Warrior for really inspiring all of us here. Um, yes, it's called Keon Sports, but Lord knows we cover so much wrestling. Really, wrestling's our, our I would say, our second biggest fan base. It kind of goes high school sports. WWE Wrestling, The Bachelor, believe it or not, but yes, uh, and pop culture like This Is Us, shows like that. But really, WWE is is so far up there, um, which makes me so happy. (laughs) You know, as I said earlier, this is really like a guilty pleasure kind of thing for me because it felt nice to step away from the world of sports for a few minutes and talk about something that I think is going to make a huge difference in a lot of people's lives, Spirit and Belief, the book by Kathy Pickett, How the Ultimate Warrior led me to trust intuition. Going to leave you guys today with these final thoughts. It's never too late to reopen up a page in a book and read it over again. And, you know, for me on a personal note, I'll tell you this. New Kathy Pickett from the time I was, uh, let me go back and think here, 14. I met her sister Peggy when I was a freshman in high school, so about 14 years old. Um, Kathy and her family were a huge part of my life for about four years, really almost my entire high school career and things happen. You fall out of touch with people happens every day. 
and as as bad as social media is, because social media could really be a cancer sometimes. But the one great thing about social media, I've always said, is it gives people a second chance to reconnect with people from their past, good people that they remember fondly. Um, the Schraders definitely were those kind of people that I really so badly wanted to reconnect with. So being able to do that uh, has lifted just a huge weight off my shoulders the last couple of years. Um, you know, you guys have read Chris's work. Uh, he, Chris has done, you know, several, uh, guest blogs for us as well. So it's been awesome to reconnect. Want to thank Kathy one more time. All right, guys, everybody go out there, trust your intuition and let us know how it turns out for you. Email me your stories, coachvin14 at yahoo.com. We'll talk to everybody soon.